when it comes down to approaching a large organization that could have thousands of domains, it is really, really important to be efficient and have clean data that you can rely on to discover subdomains that could lead to potential vulnerabilities. In this video, I want to talk about the different ways you can find every root domain, every main domain belonging to an organization, especially large organizations that operate in a large number of countries which own different domains and entities, and each of those entities could have a large number of subsidiaries and accusations. So we're going to use a bug bounty example to do this, but typically this is done in three different ways. The first one is your typical hacking your own scripts together, but this one requires you to do a lot of manual work because you have to have good data to be able to fingerprint your target and find all of their domains. The second one, which is the one that I'm not going to cover in this video is using open source frameworks. If you want to watch me cover one of these, please drop me a comment saying recon framework. If I see enough comments, then I will cover it. But these are typically your bbots or your recon for the way. And there are a ton of good recon frameworks, but all of these require resources. And there's no manual work, but you still have to kick off a scan and have a Chrome job actually set up for it to launch and find all these assets as they go live. The third approach, which is something that I have recently started doing is just reinvesting a lot of my bounties into tools and premium premium content or premium tools and applications that could make me more efficient. And for reconnaissance specifically, especially when it comes down to discovering domains for a particular organization, I use pen test tools, which if you're not familiar with pen test tools, I'm going to put you on game and show you what they do in a portion of this video. Pen test tools is a paid application that allows you to speed up your entire vulnerability process. This could be anything from reconnaissance all the way to finding vulnerabilities, exploitation, writing reports, and then also continuously monitoring assets. You can actually sign up for free and scan up to five assets. I personally use the advanced, which allows you to have up to 50 assets and you can do five parallel scans. And that costs about $200, which is a decent amount if you're making money with bug bounties regularly. But this one allows you to do a lot of different scans. But the best part of these scans is that I want to get good data and rely on somebody else that does the work for me. So I keep mentioning domains, domains, and domains. Let's talk about what I mean by looking for specific domains. I'm going to use FIS Global, a bug bounty program on Bug Crowd's platform. As an example, if you go to their bug bounty program on Bug Crowd and you look, they specify that everything owned by this company is in scope. And FIS actually operates in a lot of different countries. I think they first started in Australia. I could be wrong, but they started somewhere else and then they have started expanding everywhere else in the world and in each of these different countries kind of have their own entity maybe it is called fis global but each of those have their own set of domains that you have to find as a hacker and the third option here is with the open source tools is to actually do dns lookups based on the ip address so let's say an organization has a large asn or an autonomous system number, you can get the IP range and feed it into different tools. For example, you can use HackRev DNS by HackLook and then have it print out all different host names based on that IP address. Or you can also get that IP range, scan it all with the TLSX tool by the project discovery people and see what other domains you can find, which these are the different techniques you can use with open source to find all this data. But honestly, tracking them is very, very difficult. So that's kind of why I've kind of stepped away from doing this work manually and focused on using paying somebody like Pentest tools to do the work for me and just relying on them and their data for hacking. But also we need to talk about why is it important to find these different domains and why do I care so much about finding these really niche domains that no one else is hacking on? Well, that is because you want to be able to find and identify a domain or a subsidiary or an accusation that no one else has found. And by identifying that particular domain or that particular company, you are unlocking a larger attack surface than anybody else. So if you find two companies that are owned by FIS through some obscure domain analysis or reverse whiz or whatever the case may be, you're going to find a lot more vulnerabilities. And it's no longer about finding the right subdomain. It's about finding that specific domain or that company or organization name that you can focus and put all your efforts in. But this goes beyond looking at web phones. It's also a good place to practice and see how much you can actually collect data on these companies that you want to hack on. All right, so that was a lot. I want to kind of get that out of the way. I want to make sure we talk about the different approaches to doing this. How can you do this? And you know, if I don't want to spend money, how can I do it? And why do I care to do this? But now that we have done this, let's take a look at an example by just going to pen test tools and seeing what kind of domains we can find. Scanning for a domain is super easy. You can see on this screen, I've done this for both Apple and FIS program. If you've never done this, you can actually click on new scan, 
go to recon tools and click on domain finder and then you give it an asset that you want to find i always go with the deep option because when you do the light scan it's going to just do ssl but if you do deep scan it also looks at reverse width and looks at built width and it just adds more depth to how it looks for different assets but if you go to it you can see that it's found 1345 domains and if i click into this we're going to see a list of all of these different domains and just to make sure fis global is in there itself I'm just going to type in FIS Global. I have to make sure I spell it right. And you can see a lot of different domains are going to come up when we type this in. And that's because all these domains that have been identified, it first started with a source of data. In this case, they have identified domains.fis global as one of the emails that was registered to a specific domain. Then they have done a reverse who is on that email address. And you can see a lot of them are actually connected back to it. But there are also the ones that are under nssd.ddi at FIS Global, which if there are other domains under this name, if you didn't have this piece of information, then you'll be missing out on finding this domain itself. So this is one approach. You can see there's other email addresses. There's DNS services. There is uh, this one again. There is Doug Helm, which is probably an employee. But the, the reason why I've been using a tool like this is I don't want to have to collect all these email addresses and make sure I have this data. Why not just rely on somebody else to do it and I can focus on finding these vulnerabilities. The second thing is if you're not looking at the email field right here with reverse whiz that I've already talked about, there's a company name and you can look at the company name here is Fidelity National Information Services is coming up. But if we scroll all the way down, we can see that that name is changing. So for example, the Bank of Commerce is coming up, which is also still connected to domains at FIS Global all the way to let's see another example maybe really quickly I can sort this we can see that the capital markets company has came up the bank of commerce more and these are all the things that I have to track and having this has become really really easy but that's just on the domain level and it's really interesting because out of these 1345 domains we can find probably a lot of subdomains and even if we on, on average we have 30 subdomains some of these could be, have way more or maybe way less but if we average at 300 subdomains per domain then that kind of puts us at 30,000 domains and assets that we can potentially hack on and honestly one of the things that you can do here is you can either export this and actually have it be saved in a JSON format. Maybe you want to feed this to your nuclei. Maybe you have your own subfinder script or a mass script and your own data sources you want to use. You can take that input and put it into those tools and find all the subdomains and the automations that you want to do. Or you can actually simply go back to this right here and we're going to pick some of these domains and see if we can scan another uh, scan based on these and have it actually look for subdomains. So I can just simply take this, for example, go to bill payment support, go to scans, go to a new scan, click on recon tools and subdomain finder and put that in there and make it deep and have it come up with all the different data that it can. And as you can see right here, it's pretty fast. 15% is doing DNS enumeration. They do their own techniques and gives you data. So if you've noticed and you watch a lot of my recent videos, you notice that I'm kind of stepping away from just spending money on getting my virtual private server, which is nothing wrong with that, but I'm stepping away from having to install these scripts and set them up and configure them and just pay somebody to do this because my time is very limited and I'm just hacking part time. And since I'm making a little bit of money, I'm reinvesting that money into these tools and it's no different than buying burp suite than paying somebody else again keep in mind you can do these on your own but it comes with a peace of mind when somebody else is doing this and if they have any proprietary ways of finding subdomains you also get access to those as well now let's quickly answer the golden question of what do you do after you have thousands of domains how do you look for assets what's there to do and how do you prioritize these well it is kind of a complex answer but i'm going to try and do my best to answer that for you first what you want to do is you want to kind of crawl all these websites you can use something like hack crawler give it all these domains find subdomains for each of these assets and see which one of them comes up with the most amount of content and the more content you get from a particular domain then obviously the more bugs you're going to be able to find because there are more applications that you can attack and kind of look at. So that's the number one thing you want to do is you want to find those assets that are a lot larger. So for example, in FIS's case, FISglobal.com is large and have a lot of assets under it, but it's probably more saturated because a lot of hackers have looked for it. But you want to find assets like that based on those domains. A good way also to do that is just based on the number of subdomains. And then it's also looking at how much you can find things on there or cached on Google. So obviously the more results you see on Google, then there are probably more assets on here. But that's not just where 
where it stops, there's also a couple more things you can do. Let me show you really quickly. The first thing is, now that we have all these domains, uh, outside of crawling, one of the things that I do just using pen test tools is two different things. One is obviously that we want to launch specific scans. One of the ones that I do a lot is the subdomain takeover, not only because I want to see that if they can find subdomains for me, but also it's because I want to see if we can also extract more domains based on their scans. So not only it's going to give me a list of all their domains that they have found for fisglobal.com. It also gives me a good overview of what are the assets that are coming back as four or three, what is coming back as a 200. And just based on looking at this first page of results, maybe I don't want to really care about some of these assets on the left side, but something that does stand out to me very, very quickly is this fis.dev, which I can go back to my domain finder and see if in the list of these domains that I extracted from Pentest tools, does fis.dev exist? And if it doesn't, I can add that to my tools and also look at subdomains against fis.dev. So while I'm doing scans and looking for vulnerabilities, I'm actively looking for new assets that I can extend my attack surface. And sometimes I will dump all these subdomains. Let me just go back to our scan right here, for example. And sometimes I would go to these subdomains and extract all of them and do a port scan. So right here, we have all these FIS data. I can export it. I've already done that on my machine. I can go back to a scan and say, hey, I want to do a new scan for it, do a port scan using this and have it just do the port scanning for me because it just makes it easier. So I don't have to do these uh, recon and automation work and let somebody else handle it. And meanwhile, I can just look for vulnerabilities manually. The other thing is that you want to understand what are the domains that we should focus on within this 1,300 domains and how do we find actual assets that may have other subdomains? Well, the one thing that we can always rely on is doing some Google dorking. There are some tools you can do this with. You can feed a domain on there and see which ones come up with a lot of results. The other thing that you can also look at is based on the number of subdomains. So if an asset has more than maybe eight or nine subdomains, then it's probably a larger asset that we should take a look at and see what we can find behind it. So that's one. But the other approach that's very, very unique is actually taking every subdomain so you can actually take the list of all the domains, feed it to Sublister. And then once we have that done with Sublister, what we can do is we can feed it into a crawler, maybe something like Hackcrawler or Katana by Project Discovery and seeing which ones have the more results. Honestly, the best way to do this is based on the domain. So you can make a loop that goes through every single domain, finds and feeds it into something like Wayback URL, Hackcrawler, or even Katana. See which one is the largest and based on that, prioritize the assets that you want to hack on. So that's kind of what I would do if I was looking at these applications and a large organization that has a lot of root or apex domains. This is something new that I'm trying on my channel. I'm kind of looking at showcasing the different open source tools that you can use for a technique and also showing you a freemium or premium tool that you can use that does the job for you. It's kind of comparing them and also giving you my honest feedback and review on it. I don't know if I'm going to continue to make more of these, but let me know in the comments, is it something you want to do? Do you want me to review and see more of these premium tools and applications and compare them to the open source world? Is this something interesting to you or not? But let me know in the comments. And if you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, do all the commenting, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.